Hey, it's day two of Celebrate Sicily. Can't make it to Sicily this week, so I decided to armchair travel to Sicily through food and wine all week long. So thanks so much for joining me. Today, the title of this Facebook Live and the blog post that corresponds to it is It's Not Just About Red Sauced Pasta. Yesterday we did make a fabulous red sauce and oh my gosh, it was so good last night for dinner along with that super yummy Nero de Avila wine. And I updated the blog post from yesterday with the finished um, pasta, so you'll have to go back and check on it. But today we are doing a roasted fish with fennel and potatoes. I call them fingerlings. Today I'm using Yukon Golds. But it is easy, fast, it is a one dish meal, and I think you're gonna absolutely love it. So a little bit earlier, I did two things. The first thing I did was take some Yukon Gold potatoes and quarter them, uh, also some fennel, a little bit of green onions, some fabulous herbs, and um, some garlic, a little bit of olive oil, tossed them all together on a sheet pan, and popped them in the oven. So first things first, I'm gonna get them out and then I'm gonna give you some more tips on those ingredients. Sorry, you see my back there. Okay, so here are the potatoes, the fennel, and the um, woo, green onions, a little bit of olive oil, garlic. So aren't they beautiful? Oh my gosh. So I put them in for about 15 minutes on a 400 degree oven, and then I um, flipped them over and stuck them back in for mm, maybe about 10 minutes. So I'm taking these out of the oven, and I'm gonna use my parchment to pick them up and just slide them right into my uh, grease casserole dish. I use a little olive oil spray. So there's my olives and fennel. Whoop, got a little piece right there. So right into my dish. Took that about 25 or 30 minutes to roast and they're so beautiful and roasty toasty. Okay, so let me tell you what I did. Um, a couple of secrets. Now, I didn't put this on the recipe on the blog post because it's very difficult to explain um, and I wanted to be a, to be a correct recipe but I wanna show you what I do at home when I don't have anybody around to wash dishes for me. What I do instead of getting another bowl dirty when I toss things like potatoes, fennel, green onions with olive oil, salt, pepper, and garlic. Oh my gosh, the whole kitchen smells like garlic. Is I actually put the ingredients right on the parchment paper and then I get out the fabulous rubber gloves. Okay, I put the gloves on and on the exact same parchment that's going into the oven, I toss with my hands up all the ingredients. That way, I'm actually greasing my uh, parchment paper a little bit too, but I'm um, saving myself washing another bowl or wasting a plastic bag to put all the ingredients and get them nice and coated with the olive oil and the um, yummy herbs and um, fennel and garlic, salt and pepper. So I'm gonna take this sheet tray back behind me and tell you a little bit more about some of those ingredients. So first of all, the herbs that I use today are three. I used dill, I used a little cilantro and parsley. You guys, this recipe is a great one for using up whatever herbs are in your crisper drawer, right? That are kind of going away. Um, in fact, this dill, I really had to trim, but, uh, but it still, uh, it, it hung enough uh, that I could use it in the fish, and I'm gonna use it for topping the finished dish as well. Uh, cilantro and parsley, y'all, I have these in my home refrigerator all the time because they're sturdy green herbs and they'll last all week. And you know, we don't think about herbs as being really healthy or what's the key, uh, the word that I heard, keep hearing on the internet, immune boosting, but herbs are immune boosting and healthy for us. Every single herb brings its own set of nutrition to the table. 
and every single one brings not only nutrition but tons of flavor we don't use enough herbs you know in Europe they just throw handfuls of herbs and everything and I wish we did that too that's gonna be my motto maybe for this year more herbs so I put these um, I'm gonna put these on top I put some in with my fish that I'm gonna get out of the fridge in just a moment but before I do that I want to show you uh, fennel. Okay, so a lot of people are afraid of fennel. Don't be afraid of the fennel. <laughs> okay, I'm being silly, but it's true. In most of my cooking classes that I teach, uh, uh, people are afraid to buy fennel, and fennel is so wonderful. I've turned so many folks on to it. It's a little bit, um, it's got more flavor than celery, but it's got that same crispy, crunchy crunch. So you can use fresh fennel in anything that you use celery in. It's great in tuna salad or chicken salad. And then once you cook it, it becomes soft and sweet and delicious. So that's why we're using fennel today. I can find it in my regular old grocery store. Um, sometimes it's a little smaller, sometimes it's a little bigger. Sometimes if I buy it at the Buford Highway Farmer's Market, it's like these huge, ginormous fronds. And you don't want to um, lose any part of the fennel. You, uh, you always want to keep those gorgeous fronds for um, garnish, or they have lots of flavor too. So, and oh my gosh, y'all, in Sicily, in the markets, I promise you, the fennel bulbs were as big as my head. I promise, they were huge. I wanted to just pack my suitcase full of carcachofi, which are artichokes and fennel, and just bring it home and cook for days. Couldn't do that. So I'm gonna show you how to um, deal with the fennel. So first of all, this kind of looks like an onion bulb, doesn't it? And that's the way we're gonna treat it. So first things first, we're gonna put it on our cutting board. And you notice that I've cut this in half already um, because I had to use that half <laughs> to put in my potatoes that I cooked earlier. So um, I cut it in half, so that's our first step. Next step is now we're nice and flat on the board. I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna cut my fronds off and set them to the side. Now it really looks like an onion, doesn't it? So what I'm gonna do is take the bulb and I'm gonna follow some of the lines that are already on the fennel. Those are there so that you can figure out what to cut next. I'm kidding, it was supposed to be funny. Okay, so here we go. There is my cuts through the fennel bulb. One more, and now I'm just gonna hold it together. And you see, I kept that root end on so it would stay together. I'm just gonna take my knife and go right through my fennel. And if you forget this, y'all, there is a, a YouTube on my Taste and Savor TV YouTube channel that's how to chop fennel. So there we go. So that's literally what I did. I love pretty, um, I love pretty big pieces when I did our potatoes and you can see them hanging out there. I wanted to um, I wanted to make them substantial and not quite as big as a potato, but um, a little bit bigger than some of the chop I have here. All right, this is a, a gnarly bit. I would put this in my vegetable stock bag, but these are gold. So I'm gonna take off the fronds and set those aside, but look at this. This is all yummy fennel that we can put in if we are gonna put make another one of these um, fish dishes, or I can put it in a baggie and put it in the fridge and it's ready to go for another recipe, like uh, maybe I'll do tuna salad tomorrow. Um, so this fennel is will be great in that. So I'm gonna just move this to the side and talk to you a little bit more about those same ingredients that went in the potatoes before I talk about the fish. Okay, so green onions went into the, um, into the potatoes that are gonna be the bed for the fish. Okay, when you get the green onions, you notice, I know you do, um, green parts and white parts. Now, here we go. Sarah Moulton taught me this. Y'all know who Sarah Moulton is? She's a fabulous chef, started the Food Network practically, is now on public television in Boston, um, but she is a rock star, in my words, and in others as well. Anyway, 
Sarah Moulton taught me this when I assisted her at the Taste of Atlanta about 100 years ago. Seriously, I bet you that was 15 or 17 years ago. She taught me that you use the green parts of the green onion when you are cooking something, or you're making something where you're serving it raw because the green parts are still onion flavor but without the sting. The white part of the onion goes when you cook anything. So when I made our beautiful potatoes today, I used the white part of the onion, oh, up until about there, and then I keep the green parts. Never throw these away, y'all. These are gold. I put them in a baggie, I'm gonna put them in the fridge in a little bit, and um, when I chop them, they're great for garnish, they're great to put in a salad. It's all that yummy green onion flavor without the sting. So, that's my green onions. A um, Couple other things, I used uh, olive oil. Um, this is my favorite olive oil, this is California olive oil. The reason that I like it is for one reason, and well, for a couple, but most importantly, there is a harvest date on the back. And when you buy olive oil, if you will buy olive oil that is harvested a year and a half or less, you're gonna get the most antioxidants out of your olive oil. And when we keep taking things out of food to make it delicious and clean, we wanna make sure that everything that goes in there is perfect. So if you can find this olive oil, you can find it in the regular grocery store, about the same price. Sometimes there's even a buy one, get one free in some of the grocery stores. Um, just look for the harvest date on the back. It should be about a year and a half. Of course, olive oil is still gonna have goodies for us if it's three years old, but not as many. So we wanna get the best that we can. So I really like this olive oil. Okay, let me see if I've gone through all of the ingredients for the potatoes. I think that I have. So I'm gonna go to the fridge now. I'm gonna go offset for just a sec because I can't get the, <laughs> I can't get the refrigerator in this shot. Um, so I'm going to grab the fish out of the fridge because I've had it marinating in the fridge for about 30 minutes. So here we go. Yay. So in a Ziploc bag, I have three pieces of fish here. And let me tell you about my fish. This is Mahi Mahi. I actually had this dish in Sicily. Um, Mike and I were traveling through the southern middle part of Sicily, and there's a little town called Inna, E-N-N-A, and it was the most enjoyable experience. It was small, and everyone was so excited to see Americans. Um, everybody, almost everybody spoke English because it was a little bit bigger metropolis than in the middle of nowhere, um, and we had such a good time. Oh my gosh, we had, um, we had a, a drink, an aperitivo, um, at a bar that used to be a church that actually had a crypt underneath. That was one of the big attractions. Um, we got to see a, um, we got to see a religious procession with the men that were all dressed up in their um, beautiful white uh, tunics and each church had a different colored tunic on top. Uh, the one that we watched was um, they had these men had baby blue tunics on over their white robes. It was really interesting. It was a festival, I think, about Mary, and they carried her through the streets. Pretty spectacular. Another thing we did in Inna was we got to um, go and have uh, dinner at a mom and pop, literally mom and pop. We were the only the only gringos in there, and everybody kept coming in to get their wine and their food and his specialty was a smashed arancini. So arancini is the rice ball. He smashed them and put the sauce right on it and served it like that. They were fabulous. Anyway, I digress, back to the fish. Okay, so um, the reason I'm telling you the story about Enna is on the, uh, on the recipe menu in Enna, it just said white fish, um, but I think it was probably like Gerard or Mai Mai because they are uh, served uh, a lot in Sicily. So I went to the grocery store the other day and uh, it was actually Saturday or Sunday and found this wild caught Mahi Mai and, and uh, it was frozen. It has three pieces in it and it's about, 
a, what does it say, six to seven ounce portion. So it's just a little bit more than our typical five ounce. But anyway, it's wild caught, it's from Ecuador, and so it was a great, it was, a, it was on sale. Um, it was a great buy. So in here, I've got lemon juice that I freshly squoze. I've got some more herbs, um, same ones. I have garlic um, and I have white wine. Now remember yesterday when we put red wine in our uh, pasta sauce, we used a red wine with a good acidity. We used a Pinot Noir. This time I'm using white wine. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna use, or I did use, a Sauvignon Blanc from Marlboro, New Zealand. This is a very affordable one. Um, I would still drink it, um, but the, what you want to do when you look for cooking with wine is you want a good acidity because that acidity after your wine is cooked with is pretty much all that's left. So um, I would use a Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand or a um, Pinot Grigio from Italy. So here we go. Um, I have marinated for about 30 minutes because it's got lemon juice in it. You don't want to marinate for any longer than that. My package of fish came with three pieces. Um, you can use two to four pieces or six pieces. Just increase the amount of vegetables. And speaking of vegetables, you don't have to use fiddle in this. You don't even really have to use Yukon Gold potatoes. You could use cauliflower. Oh my gosh, even celery would be good. Have you ever had celery baked? Most Americans haven't. It's wonderful. Um, so cauliflower, broccoli, you could use Brussels sprouts instead of the potatoes or instead of the fennel. So use your imagination. Um, I'm just doing this because I wanted to show you fennel and because fennel is so beautiful in Sicily. So here we go. I've got, this has been marinated for 30 minutes. Whoops, it's going right in on top of all my yummy potatoes that have been roasted and my fennel. And I got a little bit on my hand, so I'm gonna grab a kitchen towel. And then what I'm gonna do is just kind of nestle this in here. Let me get a spoon so I can, here we go. So what's gonna happen is this is gonna go back in the oven for about 30 minutes until the fish is opaque and it flakes. And you'll be able to tell that because, I'm gonna hold this up so you can see it a little bit better. You can tell that because your fish is right in the middle of all these beautiful veggies. And it's gonna go from looking kind of translucent to opaque and white like a piece of paper. So here we go. Oh my gosh, I wish y'all could smell it. It smells so good. It's gonna make the kitchen smell so wonderful as it cooks for the garlic and the wine. Now, you guys, this is also a super recipe to use to make a day ahead of time, because you can do all of this and then just put it in the fridge. Actually, I take that back, because that uh, white wine will cook the, I mean, sorry, the lemon juice would cook the fish. What I would do is do everything, but don't put your fish in the marinade yet take your, keep your fish out of the marinade, put your marinade in there, and then 30 minutes beforehand, put a little bit um, of your marinade ingredients in on your fish, so divide your marinade in two, put some of it in um, your, your pan or your casserole dish, and then put the other half with your fish, put it on top. How's that for a quick recovery? I, all of a sudden I started thinking, ah, what would that lemon juice do overnight? Anyway. Um, being silly, but look, isn't that gorgeous? So it's going back in the oven right now. Four hundred degrees, about thirty minutes, and now I'm ready for wine. How about you? Okay, so here we go. So here's my glass, and I'm ready for some white wine. So look at this label. Isn't this a fun label? So this is from two winemakers that I know in Sicily, um, Nikolai and uh, Guido um, are two folks that came from, uh, came from, one came from the technology industry, one came from the wine business. They got together and together made this company called Elois Sicily. This is their brand, Modus Vivendi, and this is a 
blend of three grapes. It is, they are grapes that will not roll off your tongue. So Zibibo, Guilo, and Caterado. All three are white grapes that are used all over Sicily. Caterado especially, it's used in, uh, or it's, it's the most widely planted white grape. Zibibo is used in a really funky uh, wine from Pantelera, which is sweet. And Pantelera is an island off the western coast of Sicily. And then finally, Grillo is usually used in the making of Marsala, although they're beautiful dry Grillos too. So um, you'll notice that this wine is a little bit of foggy looking. And the reason it is a little cloudy is because it is non-filtered. So these two guys are big into biodynamic, which is like, um, it's like organic on steroids. That's my best way to uh, describe it. So this is what you would call a natural wine. So you've been reading a lot about that in the uh, media. So this would be a natural wine. They uh, ferment it naturally. They don't fine it, they don't filter it, and it is delicious. And it's fun because it's different. So I'm gonna grab a piece of white paper, whoops, so I can look at the color of this. So here we go. So y'all, this is hay all day. That kind of funny. Um, two good wine words for white wine, hay and straw. Hay is this color. It is much golder and richer than a straw color, which is much lighter and yellow. So. This is hay, and I'm gonna swirl and smell. Okay, I get citrus. I get some kind of like, um, almost nuts, a nutty flavor, or a nutty aroma. And a little bit herbaceous, so something green in there. I'm gonna taste it. My first taste of wine for the day, always your first taste. You wanna let it run all over your mouth so you get used to tasting the wine. I'm gonna taste again and judge it now. Great crisp acidity. Man, it tastes like lemons and Meyer lemons. And beautiful herbs and it's still hanging around in my mouth. And I'm judging that acidity on the other side of the back of my tongue. Wow. This also comes in a Maserato where they have left the skins on the grapes a little bit longer, so the color is a little bit different, but this one is just delicious. I hope you try some Sicilian wine. Well, in about 30 minutes, my casserole is gonna come out of the oven and we are going to eat it for dinner tonight. So fish with fennel, fingerlings, and wine. You can find the recipe at tasteandsavory.com under the blog tab and the Taste and Savor blog. So you're gonna have to do two clicks to get there, or actually three to find the website. But um, I'm celebrating Sicily all week long this week. It's such a wonderful place to go. I'm going in the fall and I hope you join me. Until then, ciao and enjoy your day.